During our series, I focused on how you can burn fuels like petrol and diesel to power our internal combustion engines, and also covered some of the issues of using fossil fuels and some of the alternatives we could use to power our transport in the future. Today, I'm going to have a look at how we can reduce the amount of fuel our transport uses, focusing on how we can reduce the amount of friction we generate. Now, friction is important in our transport. It allows our tyres to grip the roads and reduces the risk of skidding as a result. It also protects passengers in a car should our driver need to brake suddenly. It's important to keep your tyres fully inflated as a soft tyre actually uses up more fuel. This is because it produces more friction than is actually needed. If we were to completely take away friction from a car but still find a way to keep it on the road, then we'd actually be able to save fuel as a result. Now this technology sounds like make-believe, but in Japan and China there are trains that completely take away any friction by floating above the track. This is called magnetic levitation and uses superconductors, electromagnets and liquid nitrogen to allow trains to travel up to 500 km an hour. Now here I have a smaller version of this technology. I have a track made out of magnets, I have a superconductor and I have some liquid nitrogen. Now a superconductor is material that allows electron to flow through it without any resistance. And when you cool it down to temperatures below minus 166 degrees Celsius, it produces something called magnetic flux, also known as the Meissner effect. When the cooled superconductor is placed in another magnetic field, it pins or quantum locks in place, allowing it to levitate above the track. As long as it remains cooled, it will remain locked in place, allowing it to move along the track whilst producing no friction. The only limitations of this technology is air resistance, but it is predicted with the addition of vacuum tunnels that reduce air resistance, the trains can reach up to speeds of 5,000 miles an hour. That is the equivalent of going from Glasgow to Beijing in just one hour. So during our series, we covered the fuels we use most often today, some of the alternatives we might use in the future, and also ways that we can reduce the amount of fuel we use. I hope you enjoyed watching the videos, and thank you very much for watching.